Human beings are described in the Quran as being vicegerents on the earth, they're stewards of the earth and we're required to take care of it, including all living things. Um, we're responsible for animals and must treat them ultimately um, with respect uh, and they're entrusted to us. So whilst they can, you know, the Quran allows you to use animals perhaps for work, you know, to be beasts uh, of, of burden, if you like, to travel on the land with them, you can't um, abuse that. So, for example, the Prophet has said, you know, if you're traveling in a, in a, a green land with lots of lush um, food, to, to go slowly so the animals can feed. But if you're in a barren land, to go quickly through that so that the animals can again go there uh, to, to, to feed in, on, on, on better land elsewhere. And the companions of the Prophet, when they rode on their camels in the, the night, before they would, they would have to unload the saddles and make sure the animals were fed and watered even before prayer. So even before prayer, the animal has to be taken care of and looked after. The Prophet was very keen on, on telling his companions to make sure that they looked after um, animals. One day, uh, one of the companions was wiping down his horse very nicely, and they said, what are you doing? He says, oh, well, the Prophet rem reprimanded me the day before um, about the way I care for my horse, so now I'm making sure I look after it. Um, there was a prostitute, um, the Prophet described her life, and uh, she gave water to a very thirsty dog. It was very hot, and uh, she actually went and got water and, and gave, the, uh, gave the dog this water from her, from her shoe, and the Prophet said, you know, all of her sins will be forgiven. Um, and there were some of his companions who took the eggs from a tree and the, the mother bird was you know, really getting very agitated and the prophet said, you know, return the um, eggs to her, you can't agitate the mother. There's so many examples right the way through to how even how an animal should be slaughtered. And you might think, well, what's, you know, how's that for animal rights? But, you know, Islam is not a vegetarian religion, you're allowed to eat meat, but that has certain requirements. So you must therefore, you know, the ideal is to take an animal, to make sure it's not in can see another animal in any way to give it a meal to give it a drink and to then you know slaughter it he forbade anybody to hold an animal uh, to tie it up and use it as target practice he forgave you know forbade so many things in relation to how poorly an animal should be treated it must always be treated with dignity and and respect at all times In industrialized society, um, where animals are part of the food chain and things are so mass produced, it's incredibly important to think not just how an animal dies, but how it lived. Um, you know, organic, free range meat, which is what you have to search for ultimately to make sure that the animal had the best quality of life. Um, but also in the production of eggs, for example, millions upon millions, 20 million uh, chickens are held in battery farms across this country every year on a on, on an area of, of a cage no bigger than an A4 piece of paper. They can't move its wings, its beak is clipped so it doesn't peck itself. The conditions are so e overheated, um, you know, it increases the size of its comb and, and its wattles and it lives a very miserable life until ultimately at aged 18 months they're called spent hens and they're killed for cat food. Um, we keep chickens, uh, make sure that our eggs are ultimately free range, that our eggs are um, not part of the battery industry. And we also rescue battery hens. So at the stage of 18 months, when they're for industry, industrial purposes, they're considered spent, we carry on getting lovely fresh eggs from them. As editor of Amel, the Muslim Lifestyle magazine, we make sure that we're constantly covering issues that make Muslims realize that um, they're often part of the problem, um, but they can be part of the solution um, in relation to how we treat animals in the modern day. And we want to show how we can bring practical tips and examples to bring alive to the 21st century the Prophet's exhortations um, about how we should treat animals.